Hello, I'm Kofi Bohene. I'm a facial plastic and reconstructive surgeon in the Department of Otolaryngology, G, head and neck surgery at Johns Hopkins. Um, my practice encompasses the head and neck region, but one of the things I focused on um, is the treatment of lesions that involve the facial nerve. The facial nerve is what allows you to be able to smile and speak and eat, blink and protect your face and sometimes they can become involved with tumors and that's what we want to talk about today, uh, facial nerve schwannomas. Hi, my name is Daniel Sun. I'm a neurotologist uh, or ear and skull based surgeon at, um, at uh, uh, Johns Hopkins Department of Otolaryngology and Neck Surgery. Um, I specialize in hearing balance and tumors around the ear and the brain and the facial nerve um, uh, in that region. So let's start by asking, what is a facial nerve schwannoma? Facial nerve schwannomas are um, benign tumors that can occur at uh, any point in the facial nerve from where it exits the brain all the way to where it uh, uh, innervates our facial muscles to allow uh, smile, blink, and other facial expressions. However, most commonly, they actually occur in a very complex region between the ear and the brain that can affect people's uh, uh, ability uh, uh, or their function in terms of hearing, balance, uh, and can slowly cause facial weakness or facial paralysis. It's actually often misdiagnosed because of how rare they are uh, as other tumors uh, of, uh, of that area that may require very different treatment strategies. Uh, so for that reason, um, there's often a treatment dilemma uh, when it is found in terms of both exactly what it is and what's the best way to manage it. While most patients can do well with simply observation because the tumors are very slow growing, uh, there is also a limited window of time for a lot of patients where facial function, hearing, and balance can be preserved or maximized while having the tumor treated. And this is something that we would like to address today. So how do we maximize facial nerve function? So because the facial nerve schwannomas actually grow directly on the nerve, identifying that that's the problem very early and intervening in, uh, at the right time is the best way to preserve facial function. Oftentimes, schwannomas of the facial nerve can be confused with other things. So it's good to understand what may suggest or hint at something going wrong with the facial nerve. Facial nerve schwannomas may start off as twitching of the face, spasms on the face that people tend to ignore till they become persistent. And sometimes the persistence of the twitching and spasms will prompt a physician to recommend an MRI and then we find out that you have a schwannoma. Um, usually because of its location, unlike other tumors, you can't just simply go and take a piece of it like a biopsy. We usually do the diagnosis by what we see on what we call radiographs, specifically an MRI. Once we know and believe you have a facial nerve schwannoma, that's when the treatment dilemma starts. If you go and take the tumor out, the facial nerve becomes completely weak. If you wait too long, the facial nerve becomes very weak. It may also affect your hearing. So when do you intervene? And that's what we have a special expertise at John, Johns Hopkins. There are different ways of treating it and preserving the facial nerve. The main take home message is being able to identify it early and then discussing with uh, your uh, experts the various options that we have to preserve facial nerve function. How do we preserve hearing and balance function? Because of the unique location um, where facial nerve schwannomas tend to occur, uh, they impact not only facial nerve function, but can often cause dizziness and also total deafness in that ear. Um, one way that we can preserve hearing and balance function is by uh, not removing the tumor and causing facial paralysis immediately, but by removing bone over the tumor itself so that the tumor does not 
uh, grow into the inner ear or compromise hearing and balance function in that region. It's um, a, uh, a nuanced decision clinically because it depends on uh, each patient's individual um, um, uh, clinical presentation and personal preferences and importance of those functions to their quality of life. And like Dr. Bohe mentioned, we really use uh, uh, MRI scans and symptoms and our physical exam to determine, along with the patient, when's the best time to make that intervention to allow long-term preservation of hearing and balance. So what makes Hopkins unique in the management of facial nerve schwannomas? So we, we are fortunate to have some of the world's best experts addressing these very unique problems. In fact, some of the treatment protocols, the newer ways of addressing this is de was developed here at Hopkins. Um, so when you come to see us at the Facial Nerve Schwannoma Center, you can be assured that you have some of the world's best um, physicians and minds um, treating you uniquely and giving you what is the uh, most current um, treatment options. Um, in the past, some of the common recommendations are, because we believe this is benign, let's just kind of watch it. And, and our concept here and approach at Hopkins is that if you're going to watch a tumor, you must have a very good reason for watching it. Um, commonly, it's say you watch it till the face gets really bad, then you do something about it. Your face is precious, your facial expression cannot be replaced by anything else. So we have options of actually trying to slow down, reverse, or prevent deterioration of facial function for, for schwannomas. So we proactively or preemptively can treat your facial nerve by moving nerves around to pre prevent or repair the deterioration. So in, in, in a nutshell, we have experts who are very good at what they do, who are changing the way this uh, entity is treated. So, and that's what you can expect when you come to uh, Johns Hopkins.